Let's see how to create an OpenAI account, get the necessary API keys that you can complete this generative AI course. So you'll want to go to playground.openai.com. It's gonna require you to log in. I usually use Google to log in, but you can authenticate really however you want to there. Once you're in, you're gonna be in this sort of a playground. And here you can chat with the underlying things like GPT-40 or, or Mini, like we're dealing with in, in class. These are the two that we're gonna use primarily. Don't use GPT-4 Turbo because it's older and more expensive and not as good. That's, that's a bad three-way combination. You can define your system prompt. You can put in your user, your, your actual user message. You can configure things like temperature, maximum tokens, all these kind of things that we're gonna see how to do in code. If you wanna just go through and use a user interface and do it and do some experimentation, this is a great place to do it. So what you're going to want to do, and, and they have the various things, they have chats, they have um, assistance, text-to-speech, and completions. Those are the, 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 we're gonna deal primarily in chat and text-to-speech. Text in this course. But if you click on your little name here, if you go to profile, you can see that. I'm gonna totally block my phone number there. I get enough spam calls. And you can you can configure it. I'll probably block my email address too, although that one's fairly public. So here you can define a number, a number of things. So what you'll first want to go into is billing. And this is where you can set up your credit balance and uh, payment methods. I'm gonna not click on those. I've already exposed my, my phone number. I don't need to need you to see my, my uh, credit card too. But this will be the credit balance. And I suggest doing really pay as you go. That way there's no surprises. It doesn't accidentally hit you with something, something really big. And this way too, you can control really when things go in. I wouldn't put the whole hundred that I recommend you need for this course into here at once. You may not need that amount. If you find yourself burning through credit balances pretty quickly, for, especially for the WashU students, let me know because I'm we're we're this is the first semester that we've done this class and we're figuring this out somewhat as we as we go. And there's a variety of things that you can you can set here. So going back to your profile, you'll see that there's user API keys. You'll see a lot of tutorials that talk about using user API keys. And honestly, when I sat down to record this video is when I first realized that they have changed this up a bit. You can see I have some of these API keys here. They really want you to use project API keys. So I suggest using project API keys. We're going to go ahead and create one. I'll let you even see it and then I'll delete it after the video is done. But here we are. Project API keys, you'll notice it says default projects. If you're doing more of like a, a dev team, startup company, I don't know, something like that, you'll probably want multiple multiple projects going on in there. I tend to just use the default project and we're gonna create a new secret key. And here you've got some configuration options. I would suggest keeping it just as you. Service account, I have not used those a great deal. I am guessing that is where the a computer is, is the primary uh, user of it rather than than, than a person. I'm gonna name it as Jeff, delete this, because I'm gonna let you see it, and that could be bad. Project, it's gonna be the default project, that's the only project that I have. I would say go ahead and give it all permissions, but you can certainly restrict it or even do read only. For this course, you're pretty assured that you it's read, read only. We might do some read write in the in the fine tuning, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this one all. You can also do restricted and you can literally pick the API points that you need and, and don't need. In the future, I'll probably put a list of which of these that you you need and you don't need. You would need, um, you would certainly need this one. You would need some of the, you well, you, you pick them all at once. So you'd need this one, you'd need this one. You don't need assistance, don't need threads. Fine tuning, you won't need till the very end. And files, you don't. If you want to be more secure, do read, write, you'll need some write, and then fine tuning, you'll need write. So that, that would be the, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do all and I'm gonna create my, my security key. So if you do try to fine tune those, you might, you might need to turn some things on and off later. So I'm gonna create the key and this is it. You'll do copy and you'll never get to copy that again because that's really how they handle security. 
they don't want you to be able to um, somebody to go in later and get it. So if you lose that, you need to do you need to delete it basically and recreate it. And just so I don't lose it, there it is. Don't go through all the trouble of typing that in, thinking you're going to get something free because you're not. I will delete it right after this video. I promise. I'll still get three people that say, oh my gosh, Jeff, you exposed your key. So let's make use of that key and I'll show you how to how to do that. So if you go to any of these assignments that I have for you and we're going to we'll use. Um, so I'm going into my generative AI course material. I'm going to open up three, part three of module one. Let's go ahead and open this in Colab so we can experiment with it. You see these keys here. I'm going to open that. I have, I have quite a few keys in here for various, various things. Nothing here is too here that I need to, that I need to delete, but you would want to add a new secret. So what you would do, because you wouldn't have any of these, you would click on new secret. It would give you a little thing like one of these and you want to create this one, open AI API key, this one, open AI underbar API underbar, except I've already got one there. So I am going to do that. Oh, you get to see the two letters of my real one and you just paste it into here. And now it's, now it's there. And what's going to happen is this open a, a AI API key, your notebooks are going to read it. This line right here reaches out and reads it from over here. And this notebook access, that refers to the current notebook. So if you run it and it doesn't have access, it's just going to ask for it. So there, there's no big deal there. But now that I've got that in there, I am going to run this first part because we're going to test it. I trust it even more. And that's what happens here. This notebook does not have access to your your secret key, API key. So I'm going to grant it access. I took too, too long explaining it. So uh, click that quickly when it asks you. Okay, so what it's doing now is it's installing Langchain and all kinds of other stuff that we need to do this. And you'll notice it, it clicked this one. So this is, this is how you control which of your notebooks have access to these secrets. And why would you not just dump the key right into your notebook. I could change this to a string right here and just just type it in. The problem is now you put the secret key inside of one of your notebooks. There's multiple problems there. I can think of at least two. One is if you upload this notebook somewhere, say you throw it on your GitHub repository, you're gonna get hacked and you'll have people use up all of your all of your credits. So don't do that. The other is I use this key in all of the assignments. I mean, there's there's probably 70 notebooks in this course that all make use of that key. When I go delete the key and want to put a, put a new one in, now I'll be I'll be in trouble because I'd, I would have to change it in all of those notebooks. If it's here in the secrets area, then you don't you're not going to have to go and change it later. All right, it's finished running that, and I give you all the instructions here on on how to do this. That's another key that I've deleted. So so I am going to run this part down here that says testing your key. I will ask it, are you working properly? Sometimes I've accidentally asked it if it's alive, but then it has an existential sort of crisis. So yes, I am functioning as intended. So that means your key is working. If you messed up your key, then it's, it's not going to work there. So this is an important step. This is a pay key. So every time you use it, it is, it's, it doesn't charge much per use. I mean, it, if this thing cost even more than a penny, I would be surprised. But you'll see, you'll see how these costs work when we get to module three. All right, thank you for watching, um, and please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all my other things related to artificial intelligence. Thank you very much.